you, Lord. For God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise. I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ the truth that lives in me. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear since God and love and truth are here in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Fellowship. Praise God. Praise God. How you doing? How you doing? Just take your time. Just take your time and float back into fellowship. <laughs> Just float back into fellowship. Don't rush. Don't rush. When you leave God's presence, just float back into reality, back into the world. Never rush out of God's presence. Never rush out of God's presence. Just kind of float back into the world, into the chaos and the craziness in this world. But don't rush. Don't rush. Float back. <laughs> Let the peace of God bring you back into the chaos of this world that we live in. Amen. 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 We're in part three, part one, jam and jazz, part two, worship, part three, right now, kingdom biz. And what is kingdom biz? A time of sharing, a time of sharing testimonies about our topic for the week. Amen. A strong, with a, uh, thank you, John, with an M, Siromi, Siromi. So welcome, Siromi. If you're still here, welcome, Siromi, in the house. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, I, the text for the day, you see our, our text for the day is coming from lesson on Tuesday. Monday was about, Monday was about getting saved for the wrong reason. Monday's, Monday was getting saved for the wrong reason. Tuesday was living a holy life. That's the topics of this week. Now, uh, I'm going to be asking you, what do you feel? What do you feel are the challenges? Hey, Evelyn, Evelyn, welcome, Evelyn. What do you feel are some of the challenges to living a holy life? I, I want you to think about it. What do you think? Now, we know the world is crazy. We know the world is crazy. So I want you to share what you feel is some of the main challenges to live a holy life in this world. Now, let me give a text first. Our text, our text for Monday and Tuesday, our text, first text was Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Now, I want you to write these, these texts down. Because Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, uh, at, at verses 11 and 14, is one of the main two texts to keep in mind as you try to live a holy life. Romans chapter 6, verses 11 and 14. It says, even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you will obey its lust. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but instead, instead present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you. Number four, verse 14. Sin shall not be, shall not be master over you. If you are not under the law, but under grace. That's the first text. I want you to write these two texts down because these texts will help you remember what living a holy life is. The other verse is 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to look at verse, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, 18 to 20. 18 to 20. 
First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. Verse 18. Flee, flee immorality. Every other sin that a command commits is outside the body. But an immoral man sins against his own body. Verse 19. Or do not know, do you not know? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. Verse 20, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify your body. Glorify God in your body. And how do you, how do you glorify God? Take care of your temple. When you take care of yourself and take care of the temple, you are glorifying God. God gave us this body. God gave us this body. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. Therefore, take care of your temple. It's also taking care of your body. Eat right. Rest. Exercise. Do things that take care of your temple. Don't abuse the temple. Don't abuse your body. When you abuse your body, you are abusing the temple that God gave us to live in. This is not our body. God gave us this body. We're in it for, for a season. And then our season's over. It goes back to him. This body is not ours. So we must treat it like it's not ours by taking care of it. All the ways you take care of things. Amen. Now, those two scriptures, if you remember those two scriptures, it will help you stay focused on living a holy life. Remembering your temple is God's. Your body is your temple and the temple the Holy Spirit lives in. That's one thing. And then remember to make yourself dead to sin. The other, verse, the other scripture. So our goal is to walk daily dead to sin. That's a goal. That's a goal. Not easy. Not easy. The goal is to to walk every day dead to sin and alive in Christ and to take care of the temple where the Holy Spirit lives. That's our mission every day as followers of Christ. That is our daily mission. Now, the question for kingdom is, the question for you, remember, for those who are new, for those who are new, kingdom is, I ask you a question and then you share your testimony, put it on the screen and we get to share with each other our testimony about the question and the question again the question again is what do you feel is one of the most cha the biggest challenges in keeping a holy life this is your this is your personal opinion your personal opinion what do you feel is some of the biggest challenges in living a holy life in this crazy world and that's why what you're saying now i gave you i gave you some examples i've given you some examples in the past one of the things is you have all these false doctrines around all these false doctrines around that are trying to pull us away from God Hey Sheriff Dan the, the, the all the false doctrines. That's one example You got to make sure you stay focused on the Word of God because the false doctrines right now in the world can pull you away If you don't know what is in the Word of God You won't even have a you won't have an idea it's a false doctrine if you don't know what's in the Word of God because some false doctrines use a piece of the Word of God and then take you somewhere else. They'll draw you in with the Word of God and then they'll take the false doctrine somewhere else. And next thing you know, where's what is this? What is this? What is this belief? Because you weren't paying attention to understand they left the Word of God and went into a false doctrine. So one thing is, that's one example right there. One example right now to live a holy life, we must know what is in the Bible, and to live the Word. We see it, living by the Word. We see it every week. Living by the Word, we got to live by the Word. To know what's in the Word, then you live it. But you got to know what's in the Word in order to live it, right? So the more you study, the more you study the Word and read the Word, it keeps you grounded to know what you should be doing every day. How you should react every day. The Word of God tells us everything about how to live a holy life. But we must do it. The word says it, but we must do it. The word says it, but we must do it. That's why James 1.22 says, be what? Be doers of the word, James 1.22. Be doers of the word and not just hearers only. It's doing the word that brings, that brings victory. It's doing the word that brings miracles. It's doing the word that blesses people. Not just reading it, not just thinking about it. It's when you do it. That people see 
your child of God. Your behavior is doing it. Your praise is doing it. Your worship is doing it. So when you live the word of God and you let it just let God's light come out of you, you're doing the word by letting God's light flow through you and to others and bless others. And that's how we bless others. Because when you bless others, because God's light is in you, you're now doing the word because God is love. When you spread love, that is doing the word of God because God is what? God is love. Love your neighbor what? Love your neighbor as yourself. So when you love others, even if they're acting a fool, <laughs> even if your neighbor is acting a fool, you still love your neighbor because what? God is is love and when you when you show love to somebody who's who's an enemy you show love to someone who's hateful that's like pouring coals hot coals on someone who tries to act like act like they 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 hate you but you show love back they try to make you lose your temper but you show you the one that make you lose your temper and you hold your peace because the peace of god is in you and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So when you stay connected, the peace of God is in you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Glenda, Glenda, sin in the world has now become as clear as the air we breathe. It's everywhere. Difficult to avoid. Amen, Glenda. Sin is daytime. Sin used to be obvious at night. Now people do sin daytime, nighttime, anytime. So now sin is visible everywhere, like Glenda said. That's right, Glenda. Sin is in your face everywhere. You can look left, right, and you see people doing sin, some kind of sin. And we have to make we have to work on staying focused to make sure that sin isn't planted in your spirit. We have to make sure we don't let any of the world's sin come in to your spirit. We must be what? Dead to sin. A hey, Bodan, Shirtan. Uh, for me, knowing we are in a spiritual battle each day, I recognize the tricks of the devil in my life. It's a battle to stay ahead of him and counter his moves, but before I get off track, amen, Don. But you recognize it. See, I like what you said. I recognize the tricks. That is the key, Don. That's the main key. Recognize the tricks of the devil. He comes to what? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy everything in your life. The devil tries to steal, kill, destroy everything in your life. So recognize that. Recognize the attacks. Recognize deceit. Recognize the lust. Recognize deception. Because when you recognize it, you can rebuke it. When you recognize the attack, you can rebuke it in Jesus' name. And that's when you use your authority. To rebuke it, bind it, and cast that attack out. Don't entertain it. We say like on Monday. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. Rebuke it. Bind it. And cast that thought, that simple thought, out. Before it takes root. Don't let sin take root in your mind. As soon as you let sin take root in your mind, your body craves it. Free your mind and your body follows. Good or bad. Free your mind and your body follows, good or bad. That means we are in control of what your body gives into. We are in control. What are you feeding the mind? The word or the world? What are you feeding the mind? The world or the word? Because your body is going to follow whichever one you do. Your body is going to follow whatever the mind says. So whatever your mind is focused on the most is what your body is going to follow, good or bad. So we must be aware, we must be accountable of what we let come into your mind that can control your body. When you, when you crave something, when you crave something, you think about it first. Think about it. When you crave something, it begins with a thought. And you think about it, all of a sudden you're hungry. You think about it and you lust for it. You think first, you think first, and then the body craves it. That means we must what? Capture every thought. The word says it. Capture every thought. Not like God. Second Corinthians 10, 10 5. Second Corinthians 10 5. Capture every thought. Not like God. We must do this. This is what we must do. Capture every thought that not like God. Thousands of thoughts. 
thousands of thoughts come through your mind every day. We won't, don't worry about good thoughts. All we focus on is the bad thoughts. Get those bad thoughts out. Rebuke those bad thoughts. Don't receive them. Rebuke them. Bind them. And cast every bad thought out in mind before it takes root. Because when it takes root, now you have to fast and pray to get that thing out. Let me say it again. If you let the bad thought take root in your mind, now you have to fast and pray to get that thought out. Now it's firmly grounded. You didn't rebuke it. And now it took, it, it planted itself in your mind. And that sin is calling you. That sin, that craving is calling you because you didn't rebuke it. It rooted, it planted itself into your mind. And the mind thinks about it. And your mind can't stop thinking about it. And now your body comes in and starts craving what you can't stop thinking about. So that means we must be able to control your mind. Like my, my Bible study says, control your mind. And you can control all sin. I want to write, write this phrase down. Write this phrase down. Control your mind. And you can control all sin. Say it again. Write this down. Control your mind. And you can control all sin. All sin. Because all sin starts first in the mind. And that's why we always say the mind is the battlefield. Because every thought. Every sinful thought, every sin, first is a thought. Then you either decide to rebuke it or do it. Rebuke it or do it. Rebuke it or do it. It's a choice. It's a choice. Sin is a choice. Like the, the, the old TV show, the devil made me do it. The devil made me The devil didn't make you do nothing. Flip Wilson back in the old days. The devil made me do it. He didn't make you do anything. The devil can't make you do it. If you are follow Christ, the devil can't make you do anything unless you listen to him. We have the authority. We have the authority to what? Trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be enemy hurt you. You have the authority to rebuke everything the devil does. So if you, if the devil wins over you, it means you didn't use your authority and you listen to him and not the word of God and not the Holy Spirit. Instead, you took your mind off God and you listen to the devil and now all of a sudden you're walking in sin because you listened to the devil and gave him power. The only time the devil has power is if we listen to him. He can attack, all. he can attack, attack, attack. All he wants to attack, but we're connected. If you're connected, the attack bounces off. You're in a secret place. He attacks, attacks, you keep praising. Attack, attack, praying, attack, stand still, attack. He can attack all he wants. It's when you stop looking at God and you look at him, you take your eyes off God and look at the attack. Now all of a sudden, the attack gets bigger and bigger because you took your eyes off the one who is bigger than anything you ever face. That is something we are in control of. We are in control of what we look at, who we listen to. So we must choose to keep your mind stayed on him. Like it says in the word, keep your mind stayed on him because we trust him. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou shalt keep him at perfect peace. Whose mind is what? Whose mind is stayed on him because we trust him. Isaiah 26, 3. We must do this. We must do this. See, that's... That's what the key is. For my pen. That's what the key is to be in control. And that's how you stay in control. That is how you stay in control. Because when you keep your mind stayed on him, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you connected. And that is our goal to stay connected every single day. To keep your mind stayed on him. Oh my my my, my thing wasn't scrolling here. Okay, who else we got? Um back here. Hey, my, my screen froze. Okay, uh, Don, let's see. Uh, Don, I think the closer you get to God, the devil works much harder. <laughs> hey, hey, Don, you got that right, Don. The closer you get to God, the more the devil works to try to take your mind off God. That's right, because when you get closer to God, he knows you're going to resist him. And when you resist the devil, when you resist the devil, he what? He flees. So he's going to attack you as soon as you get close to God. Because he knows if you call out to God, God draw, draw near to God and God draws near to you. You draw near to God and God draws near to you. The devil knows that. So he's going to attack you to keep you from praying, to keep you from praising. But you praise God anyhow. 
You press to the mark. It doesn't matter what it does, Don. It doesn't matter what it does. You praise God anyhow in every attack. Say, in your face, devil, I praise God. Amen. Amen. Cinnamon, as I read the word of God and study, I now understand that I have, I have, I have to be a part of it every day. Doing it and reading it and consuming it. And I wait and see the results from what I what it said. Amen, Cinnamon. You you hold on to the promises of God. Amen, Cinnamon. You hold on to the promises of God in the Word of God. When you read it every day and study it every day and then do it every day. When you do what the Word says every day, you see the results. Like Cinnamon said, you see the results when you do what the Word says. Amen, Cinnamon. Amen. Erica, make no footholds for the devil because he will make it a stronghold. Rebuke the devil. Amen, Erica with a K. Amen. Make no no foothold. Don't don't give the devil a crack to come into your life. Don't try your best. You, it, nobody nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But try your best to not even give a crack. Don't give any foothold or crack to the devil to sneak into your life and attack your life by doing what? Praise, pray, stand still. Where to God? Praise, pray, stand still. Where to God? That's how you keep the, the crack filled, the foothold filled to keep the devil from coming in into your life and attacking you or your family. Amen. Amen. I praise God. Amen. Who got who have oh, see Dan? Oh, Dan got the Christian scriptures. Thank you, Dan. Amen. D Deanna, I've never seen such spiritual wickedness in high places. That's my challenge. A spirits in a workplace. Amen. Amen, uh, Deanna. Spirits in a workplace and in schools. I said this Tuesday, what, the reason we pray for our kids, the amount of spirits in schools and workplaces, they're filled with all kinds of spirits. Because you have no idea what the person you're working with or the kid next to you in school, what kind of home life they have, what kind of prayer life they have. So in workplaces and schools, you have all kinds of spirits. Amen, amen, Deanna, and you see it. So when you're a child of God, you see the other spirits. Spirit recognizes spirit. And if they're not of God, you recognize it. Because spirit recognizes spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you that person not of God. That's a demon. The, the Holy Spirit will tell you, stay away from that person. Because you feel the darkness on them. You feel the wickedness. It's spirit. You feel the spiritual energy, the energy within them in high places, like Deanna said. Amen. Amen. And thank you, th thank you, Erica. Yes, control your mind and you can control all sin. Thank you, Amen, John. Amen. Next one, who got here? Uh, Cinnamon. My spiritual mother used to tell me we have three enemies: <laughs> one, the world; two, the flesh; and three, the devil. That's right, Cinnamon. That's right. If your flesh is out of control, it makes the devil's job easy. The world is. Right. That's right. Three enemies: the world, your flesh, and then the devil. The devil doesn't need to attack you if you give in the world. He don't need to attack you if you give in the flesh. It's when you when you try to live your right life right, you're trying to live the life right. That's when the devil tries to get you. You got you got the world under control. You got your flesh under control. And then comes the devil to attack you to try to pull you back to flesh and desires. Pull you back in the world of desires. So that's a good that's a good point. Good point, Cinnamon. Three enemies, the world, your flesh, and the devil, who tries to use the flesh and the world. To make you weak, and then he comes in to try to knock you out. Amen. 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 Uh, Erica, change your thoughts, change your thinking, change your actions, change your habits, and change your life. Well said, Erica. Perfect, perfect analogy. You said it right. Change your thoughts, change your thinking, change your actions, change your habits, and therefore that will change your life. And you must do that every day. You must do that. Every day, amen, Erica. Thank you so much, amen. <laughs> That's right, in your face, devil. <laughs> Praise God, amen, amen, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Glenda. Not only schools, thank you. Well, hey, Glenda, when I say schools, I'm including colleges. When I say schools, I'm talking about any age, I'm going from grade school to graduate school. So, when I say schools, pray for schools, I'm talking about every school because every school has spirits. Because whenever you're among a lot of people, whenever you're among a lot of people and you have no idea 
where those spirits are in their life. You have no idea what spirits in, in that room with you. Good spirits, bad spirits, and everything in between. So when you're in school or workplaces, I'm talking about every, pray for every school, that whoever is in school of any level is, is protected from any hurt, hurt, harm, or danger. Amen? Amen, Glenn. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, and, 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 and where you hang out, wherever, wherever there's a lot of people, wherever there's a lot of people, there are a lot of spirits. Wherever there are a lot of people, there are a lot of spirits because all those people have different spirits on them. And your discernment will tell you which spirit to get away from. That's why you stay connected. When you're connected, the Holy Spirit will tell you, get away from that. Get away, stay away from that person. The Holy Spirit is telling you, stay away from that person. Time to go, time to leave. Just listen, the Holy Spirit guide you when you're in the presence of a lot of people because you have no idea how many spirits are in that room with you that can jump on you and you take them home, amen? Amen. Um, Jennifer, hey, hey Jennifer, welcome back Jennifer. Keep the lines of communication, keep the lines of communication with loved ones so you know what's going on. At least it creeps up on them or you, uh, uh, or at least it creeps up on them so you can pray accordingly. Amen. Amen, Jennifer. Keep in touch with your family. And pr even if you can't, because so, some people, some families, the, the, the kids go off by themselves and you have no idea where they are. Even if you don't know where your kids are, just pray for them anyway. Pray over them wherever they are. Because the fervent prayers of what? The righteous avails much. So even if you don't know where your family member is, pray for your family member. Even if you don't know where they are, just pray for them. Because your prayer is still covering them. Even if you don't know where they are, pray for your loved ones. Pray for your family. Amen. Keep it open and pray for them. They could be. They could even be living in sin. Pray for them. They may hate the word of God. Pray for them. It doesn't matter what they feel about the word of God. Still pray for loved ones and pray for your family. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Gary. Spirits. <laughs> spirits in the workplace is rampant. Amen. Amen. Gary. Amen. Uh, Glenda, get them from the get them from the cradle before the grave. <laughs> Cause you have no idea. Some some of our young people, our young people like to walk in rebellion in their twenties and thirties. Sometimes our young people get the false doctrines, their friends, the peer pressure of young people, and they go into a rebellious mode for a few few decades. Sometimes it could be years, but you still pray for them. They can be walking in rebellion. For 10 years, 20 years, and you still pray for them to be delivered from whatever it is they got pulled away from. So, well, so before they get to the grave, bring them back. Amen, Glenda. Bring them back before they get to the grave. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Snurks, my issue is the attacks that come from my stillness, in, in, my, in your stillness. My, my issue is the attacks that come in my stillness. I've I've gotten good at getting in stillness and like brother Don I said that I feel the distractions and attacks amp up they do when you try to stay you try to spend time with God when you try to spend time with God all the distractions come the phone somebody knocks on the door some, somebody calls you and all this stuff starts to happen it doesn't happen until you stand still and pray and somebody all these phone calls come when you pray. All the knocks on the door when you pray. Somebody's calling you next door. Somebody knocking on the door. The kids act up. It's always taking place when you're trying your best to stand still and enjoy God's presence. And that's not an accident. <laughs> Amen, Snurks. That is not an accident. The timing is not an accident. If it happens every time, it is not an accident. Now, sometimes, sometimes, okay. But if it happens every time, you stand still. That is not an accident. Amen, Snurks. Praise God. So what you do, Snurks, what you do when you feel an attack in stillness is pray harder. Start shouting. Start praising. Start in your stillness. Go into praise mode. If you attack in your stillness, pray harder. Pray in the spirit. Praise. Go into praise mode. In stillness. While you under attack to get the devil out of your business. To get the devil out of your stillness. He's trying to see how connected are you. 
Snurks, that attack is trying to see how connected are you? Are you not connected to be distracted? Are you so connected you can't be touched? Let me say it again. In your stillness, are you so connected that no distraction affects you? Or are you slightly connected and then you give in to attacks? See, the, the devil is trying to test how connected are you in stillness. And so when you feel the attack, distractions in stillness, you amp up your stillness, your praise, your worship, your scriptures, your, your, your confessions. You start speaking the word of God in stillness during the attack to protect your stillness time. Amen, Snurks. Amen. Got that? Amen. Amen, Glenda. Breath prayers, like I said, at work. John, said, John does all the time. Breath prayers. When you whisper prayers, that's a breath prayer. You could be at work. Whispering, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. you mean whispering, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that is as powerful as shouting. A breath prayer is as powerful as shouting the prayer. So don't underestimate a breath prayer. A remember, remember, the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. So when you whisper, he hears you loud and clear. A breath prayer is loud and clear because the Holy Spirit is in you. Can clearly hear a whisper because the Holy Spirit is in you. So when you whisper, He's right there. Amen. And that's the power of breath prayers. So don't underestimate a breath prayer. Amen. Amen. So we understand that is why when you stay connected and you don't let the world distract you. We don't let the world distract you. That stay, that's the importance of stillness. To stay connected. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on around you. The key is what? To stay connected as much as you can. And keep the devil out. Get thee behind me Satan. And say that. If you're under attack in prayer. Get thee behind me Satan. In Jesus name. Say that. Talk to the devil. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. I'm in prayer right now. In Jesus' name. Use your authority even in stillness. If you're under attack in the middle of praying, use your authority to get the devil out who has a nerve to try to come into God's presence. And he can't come to God's presence unless you let him. Let me say that again. The devil can't come into God's presence unless you let him in by looking at him in prayer. And that's what Snurks was saying and Deanna was saying earlier. When you're in prayer time and you feel the attack, don't take your eyes off God in the attack. Pray more. Praise more. Worship more. The attack is trying to take your eyes off the Lord and look at the devil. Distractions, the, the seduction, the, all the thoughts come to your mind trying to take you off God. And that's the purpose of the attack. In stillness, to take your mind off him of praying, of praising, to look at him, the problems, the stress, the worry, anxiety, and bring that back into your stillness time. No. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. In Jesus' name, I am a child of God, and nothing shall my enemies hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And that's how you use your authority. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. A cinnamon, when you walk with God, when you walk with God, he will give a more discerning mind and benefits of wisdom. Amen, cinnamon. Wisdom is with the connection. I'm glad you said that. Proverbs talk about it. Wisdom in all you're getting, in, the word says, in all you're getting, get understanding. And that understanding is wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. <coughs> and that's where the wisdom is. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is how to use knowledge. Knowledge is information, but wisdom is how to use the knowledge. And that's why the word says in Proverbs, the wisdom is the principal thing. The wisdom is more important than knowledge. Because wisdom is understanding how to use knowledge. If you have no wisdom, you have all the knowledge in the world. You get all the knowledge in the world. If you don't have wisdom, you have no idea how to use all the knowledge you have in your mind. All this book learning, and you have no idea how to use it. That's knowledge, no wisdom. Don't have any idea how to use the knowledge. But wisdom, you know how to use the knowledge you have learned. And now you apply it because your wisdom knows how to use the knowledge you have. Amen. 
on everything. Praise God. Uh, Gary, the phone. <laughs> hey, man, hey, man, Gary, the phone rings off the hook. Hey, hey Gary, hey, just unplug the phone. <laughs> put put the cell phone cell phone on silent during quiet time. Put your phone on silent or turn it off. If you have a house phone, take it, just unplug the phone until your prayer time's over to keep that ringing from disturbing you. Amen, Gary. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Snurks, you tell I tell no lies. Amen, Snurks. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amy, my attacks are at work. Amen, Amy. Now we know. Erica, pray, pray continually, even if it's just repeating a verse in your head. Like all things work together for good. Those love the Lord. Amen. God's promises are good. He never lies. Amen, Erica. That's what it means, Matthew 4.4. 4. That's what Erica, that's what Matthew 4.4 4 means. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what Matthew 4.4 4 says. Man can't live in the world alone. We can't live in the world alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means you speak the word of God over the situations in this world. The, the, the bread alone means we cannot live in this world alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, every word you speak over the word of God, you speak the word of God over situations, over stress, over fear, over worry. Speak the word of God over whatever is trying to take you away from God. That's how you, that's what Matthew 4 4 is all about. Amen. Praise God, Erica. Amen. Uh, Gary, breath prayers calm me down. When I'm about to, <laughs> Amen, Gary. Breath prayers calm me down. When I, I'm about to lose it. Amen, Gary. I'm so glad you do that, Gary. Don't lose it, Gary. Don't lose it. Breath prayers keep you calm. Who you're about to lose it. Hold my breath. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Right? Hey, Gary, Gary. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Peace be still. Peace be. <laughs> hey, Gary, am I right? Peace be still. You want to knock somebody out. Peace be still. Peace be still. <laughs> I know, Gary. I know that one, Gary. You got that right. Uh, Erica, it's important. It's important. <laughs> they'll leave a message. If that's right, Erica, if the phone is so important, they'll leave a message. So otherwise, ignore the phone. Unplug it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Gary. So so make sure you you breathe, take a deep breath. You take that deep breath. If someone is stealing your joy, peace be still. <sighs> Breathe deep. Breathe through it. Peace be still. That person made me so upset. Peace be still. In Jesus' name. Breathe. Peace be still. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Glenda. Uh, no, uh, Erica. Uh, Glenda, Erica, no phone call is that important. When you get into prayer time, it's devil calling to stop your prayers. And that's what hey, Amy Glenda, and that's what she just that's what she just said. You, if it's important, they'll leave a message. So don't even turn the phone off or silent. Because if they really want to reach you, they'll leave a message. Otherwise, it's a distraction. Amen. And, and that's what Eric was saying, Glenda. Amen. Praise God. Snurks, my attacks at work, my attacks at work are under the blood. And praise music. Amen. Amen. Snurks. My attacks at work are under the blood and praise music. Praise God. Amen. They have ceased. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, Snurks. Praise and praise. Stand still at work. <laughs> praise, praise, stand still with God at work. Amen. Amen. Snurks. Praise God. So that's I'm so glad you guys are sharing what to do at work, at school, at home. What you do at work, at school, at home is the same thing to keep the mind stayed on him no matter what the attack is, as I get ready to close, no matter what the attack is, to keep your mind stayed on him regardless of attacks, regardless of distraction. Because the devil, like we said, the world, like we said earlier, three enemies, the world, your flesh, the enemy. But when you stay connected, it doesn't matter which one. With three enemies, connection, when you're connected, None of the enemies can attack you. The world, the flesh, or the devil. When you stay connected and your mind is stayed on him, it doesn't matter which enemy attacks you because your mind is what? Stayed on him. And when your mind is stayed on him, you cannot be attacked in your face, devil. <laughs> you cannot be attacked when you're connected. You cannot be attacked when you are connected. Remember that. The connection is everything. The, the connection is everything and the key to victory 
The connection is your key to victory. So by no means let the devil distract you. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. And the devil got to go. Resist the devil and what? Beep, beep, he'll flee. I guarantee you. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. And the devil got to go. He can't stand that. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. Because he knows when you do that, you draw near to God. Again, when you praise, praise, stand still, word of God, you draw near to God. And what happens? God draws near to you. And that's why the devil's running. I say it all the time. The devil isn't running. He doesn't run from us. The devil doesn't run from us. He runs from us reaching to God, draw near to God, and God draws near to us. And we know God draws near to us. He got to go. Beep, beep, boom, he's gone. Because here comes the presence of the Lord. Here comes God's peace. Here comes God's anointing on you when you draw near to God. And the devil got to go. The devil got to go. The devil got to go in your face. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen, John. Uh, the, oh, the, uh, praying for, praying for, uh, praying for studies. Amen. Amen, Cinnamon. We'll pray, we'll pray with you. Um, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, we we'll pray that, pray for that, the the past that test, uh, cinnamon. We uh, make make sure you put it on the prayer list over the next few days as we do intercessory prayer. We we'll pray that you that you will pass the test, like John is working on her test. You'll pass your test as well. In Jesus' name, Amen, cinnamon, Amen, 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 Snurks. Get thee behind me, Satan. You are beneath my feet, and you shall stay under my feet. Amen, Snurks. You're under my feet and you shall stay under my feet in Jesus' name. And don't move your foot. When you praise, praise, stand still under and, and word of God. He is under your foot, firmly under your foot. When you praise, pray, stand still, word of God every day. And that's why we do it every day. As I close, that's why we do this every day. I, I'm so glad you guys shared every, everything you shared. Everything you shared today, everything you shared, the key to victory over all the distractions, praise, pray, stand still, word of God. Your connection is everything. And that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important to always what? Stay connected because your connection is everything. Remember that your connection is everything. No matter what the distraction, no matter what the attack. No matter what the confusion, your connection is everything. And we are un we are in control of our connection. Because we're the ones who decide if we let the devil distract us. No, we're the ones who decide to listen to the word, God, Holy Spirit, or the devil. We control that. We control that. So when you choose to stay focused on him, there's nothing that the devil can do. There's nothing the devil can do. To distract you because what you're firmly stayed on him whose mind is what stayed on him when your mind is stayed on him there is nothing the devil can do to take you away from god because your mind is stayed fixed immovable on him and that is the key to walking a holy life every day that is the key to walking a holy life every day we must do this be doers of the word. We must do this. We must do this. Point to yourself. I must do this. I must do this. What we're talking about today. To live a holy life. I must keep my mind stayed on him. To live a holy life. I must keep my mind stayed on you Lord. To walk and live a holy life. Stand together. I must keep my mind stayed on you Lord. To live a holy life. Say it again. I must keep my mind stayed on you, Lord, to live a holy life. One more time. I must keep my mind stayed on you, Lord, in order to live a holy life. And that's where I close. Because we want to live the best we can a holy life. To live God's will, God's way. To live a holy life is to live God's will and God's way the best you can do. All you do is the best you can do. All you can do. 
is the best you can do. No more. And God knows if you're doing your best. God knows if you're doing your best. To keep your mind stayed on him. Stayed on him. Stayed on him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord. As we seek, Lord, to live a holy life, Lord. Our goal is to live a holy life the best we can every day, Lord. So right now, Lord, we as a fellowship pray together for a supernatural focus to keep our mind stayed on you, Lord, in order to live a holy life, Lord. To keep our mind fixed on you, your word, and the things we should be doing every day, Lord. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God, every day, Lord. Bless each person here right now, Lord. Bless each fellowship member right now, wherever they are in the world. Right now, Lord, I pray this corporate prayer right now over the fellowship right now, Lord. Father God, I stand in agreement right now with every prayer request right now on the heart of every fellowship member right now. Whatever it is, prayers for healing, provision, breakthrough, deliverance, testing, whatever it is, Lord. I stand in agreement with every prayer request right now over the fellowship. The every fellowship member prayer request shall come to pass. The favorite prayers of the righteous avails much. Hear our prayer, O Lord. And Father God, right now, Lord, right now, as we stay focused right now, and we stay focused in prayer right now, Lord, we stay focused in prayer right now, Lord. We pray together right now at fellowship, Lord. Daily we pray, not only world peace. We pray for a supernatural hedge of protection to be over the fellowship right now, live or archive. The every prayer request right now on the heart of every fellowship member shall come to pass. The fervent prayers of the righteous avails much. Hear our prayer, O Lord. And Father God, as we continue, Lord, to come together as a fellowship, Lord, six days a week, Lord, daily we pray for a supernatural history protection to be over everybody, Lord, to protect us from any hurt, harm, or danger, for unexpected shootings, accidents, natural disasters, or violence order of any kind. We pray for a supernatural healing, Lord, over the pandemic, variants, and every other disease, Lord. We pray for our leaders, for justice, for change. We pray, Lord, for you to continue to wave your mighty hand over the spirits of rebellion, division, racism, and hatred. As we commit, as a fellowship, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways. So you are here for heaven. Forgive our sins and heal our land. All these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God, fellowship. And that's what it's all about. As we do the best we can every day to live a holy life, God sees that. God sees your willing heart. And all God needs is a willing heart to do what's right. A willing heart to do the best you can. And he blesses that. God blesses a willing heart who's doing the best they can to live and breathe the word of God. Know that. Believe that. And receive that. God sees you doing the best you can. And don't let the devil bring any doubt to that. Rebuke every thought for the devil. Try to make you think you're not doing enough. To make you think you're not praying enough. If the Holy Spirit says pray more, pray more. Holy Spirit says praise more, praise more. Our goal is to be obedient to the Holy Spirit every day. And ignore the devil's distractions. Ignore the devil's attack. Try to pull us away from God. Amen. <clears throat> Right now, I'm going into the closing prayers and the prayer of salvation. As always, please no typing until after closing prayers. Anything typed during closing prayers is to lead our respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. 
And you've been here a long time. You, you heard the prayer. You heard the praise in the beginning. You heard the prayers and you heard the sharing. But right now you can't connect because right now your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turning away from you. Friends stab you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. Because God sees what you're going through right now. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. And that is why you're here. <clears throat> you're not here by accident. God brought you here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart. Because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil tells you what you leave God or fail God. You can never go back. And that right there is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and then fell back into sin, there's nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Re Commission like the Christ, and there's nothing the devil will do to stop you. So, right now, if you're a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression, darkness, fear, and hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, either way, I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat after me Father God, forgive me for all I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. Right now, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without giving you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything. That's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is right to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us. We're not one God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And he'll tell you how you reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, and starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you will feel in your life, which is God let you know it's going to be all right. God got this. God's got this. All the time, all the time, he's with you every step of the way. And we hold on to that. We hold on to that right now. Because God is a good God. He'll turn everything around. But you got to seek his face every day. Not every now and then, every day. The next step is what? To repent. And now repent means to change your ways from living in sin to living God's way. And again, the more time you spend with God every day, not every Sunday, every day, the stronger you get. And next thing you know, you'll turn away from things you used to do in sin and instead seek God's will and God's way according to his word. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash. And every other mark spirit, named a name seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, our home, our kids, our marriages, back to the pit of hell for which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. 
Loose restoration, Lord. Restore every area of life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose a supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual and emotional healing. By your stripes we healed. And Lord, we confess, Lord. Confess every day, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, every day, confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. A supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, a supernatural debt cancellation, Lord. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, your blessings of abundance, Lord, rain down, Lord, rain down. Or first and financial need, whatever it is, Lord. For you, O oh Lord, shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory. Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want anything when the Lord is my shepherd. Let's say this part together, fellowship. Repeat after me. For I am the head, not the tail. I am above, not beneath. I am the lender, not the borrower. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I'm blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall my enemies hurt me. Or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know. Now we know every day we take time. Every day we take time to see it. Every day take time and visualize the miracle. See it. Believe it. And then receive it in your heart. And as you receive it in your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the wind. We we'll never know the exact when, but because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up. Any day you wake up. Could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle you pray for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face of the pool upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray over. A blessing to everyone you pass by. And bless without opening your mouth. Because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24-7, 365, including leap here. Father God, all these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. And the fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.